This is Evan Rogerson, Nine Litter Gang, and today's kind of going to be a different video than usual because something funny happened like about a week ago, and I kind of wanted to cover it. And in addition to being funny, it should also help make you understand the rules better. So I think this is a cool video to make, and eh, if it goes well, I'll make more videos like this. And as always, if you want to show your support to the channel, like the video and leave a comment to please the YouTube algorithm. So to start off with, um, Note 3, which you will see right here on the VEX page of Flex Wheels, was not here like a week ago when I took this picture. So that's kind of the whole premise for what's going on here. So as you can notice, um, Flex Wheels, they come in different durometers and sizes. So sizes obviously make sense. I mean, it's just how big the wheel is. And then the durometer is essentially its squishiness. So like 30A is the softest Flex Wheels. Those are like the light gray ones. They're very squishy. And then you have like 60A, which are like the black ones that are firm. And then anything in between will be a variety of thickness. I mean, this is like a relatively industry standard thing of higher durometers are less squishy and lower durometers are squishier, just to kind of put it in informal terms. So as you can see here, they have their 30A flex wheels and their 60A flex wheels, and then they also have 40A flex wheels. Now, if you've been a flex wheel enthusiast for quite some time, 40A flex wheels might seem a little bit weird to you because Here's just a random picture I found of the VEX website from like two years ago. Um, Wayback Machine, um, well, Wayback Machine is not working right right now, so I can't give you an exact date for when it swapped over, but I'm pretty sure it happened in the last month. You can see that they used to sell 45A flex wheels in addition to 30A and 60A, and now you can see that it's 40A flex wheels. So I noticed this last week, and I'm pretty sure because I've been on the flex wheel page a couple weeks ago, even before that, just to like order some more. So I noticed that like, hey, that's a 40A flex wheel, not a 45A flex wheel. So here's where things start to get complicated and why 40A flex wheels were like kind of illegal. Um, so if you look at the game manual, we have rule R7. So robots must be built from the V5 system, yada, yada, yada. Product pages on the VEX Robotics website should be used as the official definitive source for determining if a product is a V5 component. So that kind of also is clarified with part H of legacy discontinued products are only permitted if they are explicitly listed in this game manual or still listed on a V5RC or V5RC legal on the VEX Robotics website. Well, if you go to the official flex wheel page, there's no reference to 485A flex wheels. Um, 45, I mean, you can see there's one for the SKU and then those two notes, which as I previously pointed out, were not there before. So no reference to 45A flex wheels on the VEX official website. And if you go to the discontinued V5 parts, you can see this is all the discontinued parts that are still currently legal. So you can still use your five inch wheels and your six inch leg wheels to your heart's content. Um, like if you search, you search like wheel, you get a bunch of different options, but like it's the five inch wheels, uh, the old Omni wheels, Mechanum wheels, more random wheels. Um, but as you can see, there's nothing there for flex wheels. So, like, as of a week ago, 45A flex wheels were completely wiped clean from the VEX website. Did not exist. No evidence that they ever existed. So, as for the game manual, they're, they're not legal. I mean, this Q&A from last year kind of covers it a little bit more. So, discontinued but still legal is that parts list. So, if the part isn't on that website, either in the discontinued part or just available to buy, then it's not a legal VEX part. So, 45A flex wheels or by the strictest interpretation of the game manual, not legal VEX parts. So I brought this up in a forum post on VEX forum four days ago, and essentially put a more condensed version of what I said here up on this website. Because as you can see, like I thought these were different parts. Maybe VEX changed from 45A flex wheels to 40A flex wheels because it's kind of a whole topic for another thing, but they no longer sell like the VEX flex wheels on West Coast Products website and West Coast Products makes their own flex wheels. So I didn't know if that was like a cascade effect of that or if this was just like a mistake on the VEX website. But I wasn't quite sure on that because like literally everything was changed. No reference to 45A flex wheels anywhere. So uh, Dirao who needs to be on the GDC or perhaps secretly already is, um, he like does stuff for the VEX website um, and he clarified that they were recently relabeled to 40A to accurately match their durometer. And they were actually the exact same part. 45A flex wheels are now back to being legal. 
And as for whether or not they were ever completely illegal, um, that depends on how strictly you want to follow the game manual. As you can see, though, on Rebel Events, um, the date the, the, that this was posted was October 13th. And, like, there were competitions all throughout October 12th, and even one on October 13th. So, like, potentially, if you had been at those competitions and you were eagle-eye watching the Flex Wheel page, if I were, like, head ref for a tournament and somebody came up to me with this argument, I would probably have to agree that, yeah, 45A Flex Wheels aren't legal. I know that this has been brought up before as something that people have criticized me before of why do I feel that you should always be following the strictest interpretation of the game manual? Because by all technical definitions, the 45A flex wheels were illegal. And I feel like this was a big thing with like string um, back in spin up, which, oh, spin up, we do not miss you. Um, basically, they increased the minimum legal length of string partway through the season. It used to be any string that was less than a quarter inch thick was legal, and then they increased it, say it must be between an eighth of an inch and a quarter inch thick. Well, prior to that update, my team had been using string that was smaller than an eighth of an inch thick. So we had to go out and buy new string. So yes, if somebody had string on their robot that wasn't an eighth of an inch thick, they were gaining a competitive advantage. Why? Because all the time that we spent redesigning our string system to match the new components, was time that the other teams weren't doing it and just breaking the rules. So even if it's something that seems insignificant, like, oh, they used a slightly illegal part, the fact that they weren't paying attention to it and other teams were paying attention, other teams put in the time right before the tournament to get whatever was illegal now to meet the new criteria, the teams who didn't do that now got to spend that time like tuning autos or something. And you're welcome to disagree with me on that, but that's kind of my reasoning for why I think you should always be following the strictest interpretation of the manual. Thankfully, it's all fixed and you are content to use your 45A flex wheels to your heart's content. That's kind of everything for this video, just something a little funny and hopefully informative that I thought I'd share. Hopefully you kind of understand um, when you can tell that like a part is legal and when it's still legal to use. So yeah, again, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like and leave a comment and I'll see you in the next one.